In today's video, I'll show you how can you 10x your editing speed with these workflow techniques. A clean workflow is the key to efficient video editing. If you just stack on a chaos, you don't take any line of organization, your projects will take forever and the quality will suffer a lot. So let me show you my workflow step by step so you can edit faster, cleaner and way better. Let's get into this. So let's start with what everyone thinks it's boring, but it's super important, that is organization. Before you even think of starting a video, you need to make sure that everything is organized. First things first, I download all of the footage into a project folder. I separate it into clear subfolders. Footage, extra footage, elements, assets, and music. So think of this like setting up your workspace before cooking. You don't want to be scrabbling for ingredients mid-recipe. An organized editor is a fast editor. So after everything is organized, we go to step two, that is checking the footage. This is where you should figure it out what's happening on a video. Although the client can give you context, it's always better if you see it for yourself. This is where I take mental notes as well, so I don't go into editing the video blindfolded. So make sure you do some mental notes about about important moments, what the video is about, good takes and bad takes, or major retakes or stumbles that could happen. You can say to me, oh Eros, but shouldn't we do that on cutting? 100% and you will. But the thing is, if you are prepared to do it, you're gonna be so much faster doing it. Because if we're gonna be honest with each other, you're gonna see the video either way while cutting it. So might as well just see it first so you know what you're ready for. And this saves you so much time because you already know what you're working with. So the cutting will be way way smoother and now it's time to cut it's the third step of our workflow and i call it the four step cutting a lot of people dive in straight to the cut and trying to do the finished cut already but with this four step cutting you will see that first the cutting is going to be way better and second you're going to be way faster doing it and as a cherry on top you also keep the project clean and organized. So let's get into this. So first, we have the waveform cutting. The goal of this is remove all of the silences. And I'll mention later on the video that silences are super important. But now you want to remove the big, big silences that you don't want to be wasting time looking at it. So in this section, you cut pauses, hums, and long silences by checking the waveform. Then you go to rough cut, where your goal is to remove bad takes. There is no need to keep mistakes or shutters anything that obviously shouldn't be in the video gets chopped. Then you go straight to fine cut, where your goal is to decide what stays and what goes. This is the decision making phase. This is where you fine tune the structure, making sure that only the best moments remain, only the takes that help the story progress. And then, like the name says, you go straight to final cut, where your goal here is to adjust timings, webcams, POVs, everything to make sure that the video is ready for the next phase. Now, you need to make sure that everything flows well. You adjust the pace the rhythm and you get the cut ready to be posted and what I mean to be posted is in the fine cut you need to get the video ready to go live and oh arrows no music no visuals nor anything listen when you finish the final cut this cut should be the one that you don't touch anything this should be the cut that would be ready to go live if you didn't have to add anything to the video neither visuals neither music nor anything this is the cut that should be ready to go live this four step cutting just keeps you away from doing inefficient or random cuts throughout the video so the next step that i do is music and you can find it weird because normally people let music be the last thing they do my next choice is music because music affects the pacing and the rhythm of a video a slow song makes the video feel calm and chill and a fast track makes the video feel energetic. And there's some techniques that I do that you will see that affect the pacing so much. So let's get into this. So first things first, I find a track that fits the mood that I'm trying to transmit. If it's a suspense video, if it's uplifting, even if it's a epic music, then I adjust the cuts slightly to sync a little bit with the beat. It wouldn't make sense to do fast paced music into slow cuts, right? And then if the music needs a little bit of a push, I add extra sound elements like risers or subtle hits to enchant the transitions. A well-paced video is so much nicer to watch, and music plays such a huge role on that. 
And as some of you ask, I'm gonna do a full video on pacing and rhythm so you can understand how music also affects on that. So let's get into the funny part. Step five the visuals. So visuals come up next, but I split it into two parts. So first, I have the light visuals, such as zooms, hits, transitions, everything that is simple to do. And then I go to the big boys, the heavy visuals. So it's all of the complex effects that require a little bit more time to do. And why do we separate it into steps? Because when you're doing complex effects, you don't want to finish an effect and thinking about should you add a zoom here or not. So pretty much we do the simple stuff first and then we go to the complex effects and make the best work that we can without worrying about the simple stuff. And now, one of my personal favorites, we go to step six, that is color correcting. And now, talking about color, I also divide it by two phases. And you choose these two phases depending on the video that you do. For example, if you do the commentaries, I don't think you'll have much RL footage to color correct. But if you do RL, you'll have both. You have the visuals and the footage itself to color correct, right? So the first, RL footage. With RL, I also mean talking head, everything that has a real person. First things first, I fix the white balance. What white balance does is making the whites white and not bluish or orangish. Then I tweak a little bit of the contrast and saturation to make the video pop. And finally, I apply a subtle grade to fit in the tone of the video. And now for the second step, the visuals. First things first, I apply a curves effect that you can mess up with the shadows, highlights, contrast, midpoint, whites, blacks, everything. Next step, I love to see some glow on visuals. So myself, I use Deep Glow 2. It's a plugin that you can buy. It's pretty cheap and it's pretty worth it. I apply Deep Glow into the visuals, make sure they are balanced, reducing the amount of brightness that the glow does. Then I like to add some shadows and some highlights into the items that I'm showing on my motion design and especially add a little lens flare into my light source. I think that with this color correction, the visuals pop so, so much better. And I'm also going to do a future video teaching you how can you color correct your motion design. And for color, that's it. A well-corrected color scheme just makes you look like a pro. Even if the original footage isn't perfect, you can always make it better. And knowing color correction, it's so beneficial to stand out from the others. And then we go to the final step of this workflow, that is sound effects. Sound design is so, so, so underrated. And again, I break it into two stages. First, I do the wishes and simple sound effects, something like a hit, a riser, everything that enchants cuts and the transitions. Super simple, right? And then I go to creative sound effects, making the sound effects for every visual that I do, some sound effects that the video might need, extra details like some reverb or some creative auto touches and everything to make the video better. Please spend time on sound design. A video gets so much brighter in terms of quality when the sound design is perfect. My recommendation, please invest in audio library subscriptions. Make your sound effects unique and you will see that you're gonna stand out from any other editor around. A good sound design makes your video feel polished without the viewer even realizing why. So that's it for my workflow and let's recap everything. I will make a checklist right now on the screen and one that you can download yourself in the description down below. It's a Notion document that you go step by step checking up the boxes on every step that you do. And if you follow this structure, you'll add it faster, cleaner and way way less stress. So here's the checklist. Organize your footage, check everything before cutting, use the four step cutting with the subdivision of waveform cutting, rough cut, fine cut and final cut. Then you add the music, then you do the visuals, light and heavy effects, then you color correct everything in a video and at last you do the sound effects. This method saved me countless hours in front of a screen, so try it out and let me know how it goes in the comments. This was a super quick overview of my workflow, but if you want to learn everything in depth that I mentioned on this video, join the Editing Nexus, a school community that teaches you the skills in order to progress in your video editing journey. Thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next video.